going on, everybody? My name is Stone Cold Steve Austin, and the fact of the matter is, you're watching the Joe Cronin Show, and I will whoop somebody's ass. What's up? Oh, thank you, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Thank you so much, Stone Cold. Great to hear from you. It's always good to hear from Stone Cold Steve Austin on a on a Thursday, rather. Is it Thursday? It is Thursday. Let's get weird. We got the Rittenhouse verdict in case going on. We got the the judge right now is explaining how MSNBC took photos and videos of the jurors allegedly and allegedly followed them. That's crazy. Uh, we got Kenny Omega is injured, and we knew that. We said this last night. A lot of people didn't believe me. Did you know that? A lot of people were like, I don't think he's that injured. Well, multiple surgeries in incoming. So multiple surgeries for Kenny Omega, man. What's up, everybody? We're just hanging out. Plus, I got a big shout-out, man. I got a shout-out, Sith Negan. But I got a big shout-out as far as Sith Negan goes because he reminded me of something big that I got a I gotta shout-out I got to bring up. And you're going to notice it down in the description box down below. We're going to listen to the judge in a minute because this is fun. I think the Rittenhouse thing is hilarious. I think wrestling talk is hilarious. It's a big news day for a lot of different things. And rather than go live on my other channel and then this channel and everything, I'm just going to talk about everything today. So today's video may not be for you, but I hope it is. Uh, we're going to hang out. We're going to have fun. We're going to talk about all this stuff for a few minutes here. I don't know, 30 minutes, one hour. We'll see what happens. And uh, we'll have a good time, I think, in the chat. What's up? Omega's been injured for months. Yeah, that's the thing. I think he's injured and then also re-injured. So I think we've got like a double injury with Kenny Omega uh, going on here. You know, so multiple multiple surgeries. So when Kenny Omega goes in to get the surgery, this guy goes in and has multiple surgeries done. By the way, they did. They got rid of the dislike amounts. So you can't see how many people dislike something anymore. That's really weird. Man, people are so... <laughs> What a soft society. I miss the bots, though. Remember the bots that would dislike the video? They'd be like 100 dislikes on my video, and then like two hours later they were gone because YouTube algorithm was like, oh, these are fake. But I guess this eliminates the algorithm having to, you know, take away the dislikes because they were fake. So I guess that's what I guess getting rid of the dislike button will do. I guess. We got we got lots of stuff today, man. Now I, I was hoping to go I was hoping to go watch Ghostbusters this afternoon, but we didn't get there in time. I thought me and Leo were gonna get out to the movies. That didn't happen. So now I'm not gonna be able to see Ghostbusters until Tuesday. So that really stinks. <clears throat> you know? I was hoping to see it earlier. But, you know, it is what it is and you know, we'll have to wait till Tuesday. It's not the craziest uh it's not the craziest uh, thing, you know, got to see it, you know, go, you know, all the reviews are kind of like, yeah, it's a, a lot of references. It's not that great, but it's all right, you know, whatever. So, you know, I think that I'm expecting to just kind of go in, see some Ghostbusters references, see the stuff used, see the original guys for a second or two. And it's about it. It's what I'm going in expecting. And I'm so whatever. It will be what it is. Not that, nothing crazy, nothing wild, whatever. That'll be the Ghostbusters uh, when we go to see it. But I do want to say thank you to Sith because he reminded me of a few people who have uh, crossed the threshold. You know, the cross the threshold plane. Um, and those people are listed down below and they will always remain, of course, in the description boxes, as you know, down below. Um, one of the tiers is, you know, People that are $25 producers, which, you know, you'll see those people here. So I will shout out the $25 producers in a minute, but I do want to shout out the uh, the all-time list here real quickly before we get into some more wrestling news while we're waiting for this video to get shared around and everybody to get the alert that I'm live. Um, the executive producers, these are people that have donated $3,000 or more to my channel whenever, like all time. So we have some new names on the list uh, that I had not added. Some people weren't new to this. I just hadn't added them yet. And uh, Sith brought that up to me. So I do want to go through the list. 
Lemon, Arushin Chu, Wool Hat Demon, Bad Omen, Null Death, Just Call Me Luke, TNA Better Than WWE, The Goon, Nikki T, Gorilla Strong, The Bear, 1322, uh, Jason Tarr, D Moon, Justin McNeil, Schleppy, It's Bullsy, D Welsh, Junebug, Soundwave 92, who's a, I just added Soundwave 92 thanks to Sith Negan, the Renegade Joe Compton has been added as well, thanks to Sith Negan. J.D. Venom added as well. He should have always been on there. Uh, Shell, of course, Shell is now on that list. She should have been there for a while. Sith Negan is, of course, up top right behind Brian Himmelfarb, the Himmel God. There they all are. And actually, there's another name that actually has to be added to that. Um, Drew's going to get added to that, actually. That, so i got to get him on there. Um and also want to shout out the $25 producers, man. Uh, we got some wrestling news here that I'm going to talk about this wrestling news uh, as well. We got that going on. I'm listening to the to the trial of the Rittenhouse trial because that's news for everybody today, I guess. And um, But Craig Dubby's, man. Craig in the $25 producer Patreon list. Thanks to Craig. Red Poison. Humble to be. Skittles. Alan Stober. Shell Bryan. J-Man from KC. Colonel Stutters, Kevin Murphy, Jake Leonard, Cold Brew Crew, Stevio, Dwayne Crenshaw. Six, five, three, five. The big six. Sith Negan, the biggest supporter in the $100 spot. 31 months strong and going long. Nikki J, Chad LaFave, Drew Bar 100, CJ Rella, uh, Justin McNeil, Matt Rossmeyer, Alex, uh, uh, Alex O'Donnell, Justin Tarr, Kalel Bama, baby. Still kicking when OG, Jeremy Brooks. J.D. Venom and Star Scream, uh, $25 producers. Thank you guys for that. Now get wet. What's going on? Um, what's up, Mr. Nice Guy? How you doing, dude? I will 69 you. Let's go. Uh, if you like to follow the best coverage of the Rittenhouse case, I highly recommend subscribe to Key to Law. Thank you, Eric. Uh, there's a lot of channels covering it. There's so many channels covering it. It's insane. I just figured I would present it to you guys here today if something happens. But this is big news in it is that MSNBC allegedly the guy got arrested the other or not arrested he got ticketed the other night he was following the jurors bus they board up the bus and everything he was following the bus he got pulled over because he ran a red light trying to keep up with the bus and then he told the police that he was instructed to follow the bus that's why he was following the bus so that's kind of weird you know what I mean very strange. See what the I have saying. instructed that no one from MSNBC News will be permitted in this building Oh. for the duration of this trial. Uh-oh. Uh, this is a very serious matter, and I don't know what the ultimate truth of it is, but absolutely it, it, uh -oh. it would go without much thinking that someone who is following a, a jury bus, uh, that is a very ex it's extremely serious matter. And uh, will be referred to the uh, proper authorities for further action. Thank you. Oh, MSNBC, you're going down. We'll see you, MSNBC, you creepy fucking weirdos. Following the jury with cameras to take pictures of the jury when you're not supposed to do that at all. I hope that they are taken to court by the state. And NBC is, I don't know what the charge is. Uh, I don't know what that charge is. I don't know what you can get in trouble for. I don't think, is that a, oh, is that a federal crime? Following a jury? MSNBC following a jury to take photos of them? We now have the witness who was following them. We have the, the person who was following them. We have them saying to the police as a statement, I was told to do this. They work at MSNBC. Is this not, is this a federal crime? I don't know. Anyway, so we'll get back to that. A lot of stuff. Uh, what up, everybody? Just having some coffee here. A little Dunkin' Ball Sack. Drinking some Dunkin' Ball Sack. I hope everybody in the chat is having some uh, Dunkin' Ball Sack. If you drink Starbucks, die. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> What's up to the chat? How you guys doing? Um, Omega did a what video? Let me go look at it. Is there a video I can watch on Omega? Is that what you're saying? Omega did a video with YouTube chiropractor Dr. Hightower. Why? Is, he, is there something going on? Is there like, so there's something wrong with his back too? Not just his arms. Kenny Omega 
chiropractor. Oh, four days ago. Yeah, is this it? I mean, should he be doing this when he's injured? Waiting for. Oh, what's your deal, brother? And what do you want me to do? What am I supposed to do? What's your deal, brother? What was that, dude? What's your deal, brother? What's going on on third YouTube land? I might have started him just a little bit. He wasn't ready for that. We're here with the Omega. I'm scared. Kenny Omega, the cleaner. AEW. Can we go back to when he scared him? What's going on on third YouTube land? I might have started him just a little bit. He wasn't ready for that. We're here with the Omega. I'm scared. Kenny Omega, the cleaner. AEW champ. Get scared. Champion, one of the main men, one of the best match ever guys out there. Veteran of the game. Which is coming up. November 13th, Minneapolis, Minnesota, full gear. Full crowd? I think so. I think it's already sold out. I think so. Sold out. You know, a lot of legends and industry greats. And this guy, this is the guy who probably hurt him. This is why he had to go have surgery. This freaking witch doctor hurt fucking Kenny Omega. That's why he's in surgery. I can't really speak anymore. Oh. I was a WCW kid. Uh -huh. and how many how many guys have sex with this guy after he gets done with this? Because I'm like, it's weird to me. Like some guy like rubbing you and breaking you down like that. I'd be like, you know, let's let's do more. Let's do a little bit more of this. I really do need some massage people to like come and rub me. I have to go with women though. It's just I maybe I go with a guy, but it's just weird to me because I don't want to talk. You know, during it, I just want the person to just like molest me with their hands, like for like thirty minutes. Like you don't speak. Molest me with your hands, and uh, I pay you. You know that's why I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I just want that. I want to be a. I want to be rich so that I can just pay people to show up at the house and be like, we're gonna just rub you for one hour. Like I would definitely do that, dude. I would get in a hot tub. I would get rubbed down, then I'd get in a hot tub, and then I would like just take a nap. That's what I'd do, and then I would go like save children or something if I was rich. That's what I would do. Huh? Going back to like 1990. Yeah. You know, and so. Oh my God, going back there. Like I go back to fucking. On the Monday Wars, I was like, we're finally gonna get him this time. Yeah. And then they didn't get him, and you know. You know, it's funny you say that because I remember, like, in ah, in This is weird, bro. It's like I'm watching a guy make another guy come. Like I'm, I don't know. I, it's just weird. I don't know. I can't do it. I can't even watch this. It's uncomfortable to watch to me now this new era we're going to see that same type of innovation you know from you guys making that push like i would be like shut up and let me sleep while you do this memorable performance those are the guys that i feel like i can still learn things from and a guy like mick foley alternatively not the most athletic guy naturally but day and just a control he's a gracie killer he, yeah he, and he's he's got gracie hell, hunter gracie hunter gracie hunter yeah sure. gracie hunter and He's amassed quite a record by being a, a quote-unquote pro wrestler. So, like, man, that's a hell of a spokesperson for our sport. Um, and I think even Josh Barnett, too, would represent pro wrestling when he would fight. And he was incredible on the ground as well. So, oh, there we go. Good Christ. And again. Nice. And left side. Left side feel better, too? Yeah. One more. There. Oh. All right, right again. Yeah. I, I see right around the shoulder blade area back there, like that's where I get this huge knot. Like right in here somewhere. I get this gigantic knot. Like if I went to this guy, he would I'd be like, dude, just feel this. And he'd be like, Oh fuck. And then he'd take out his pecker and he'd probably like piss on me or something. He'd be like, dude, I'm gonna pee on you now. And I'd be like, Okay. Yes, piss on me. That makes sense. And um, dude. Anthony says, my sports massage therapist is a dude, and I go to see a th female um, chiropractor every week from bodybuilding. Yeah, it's cool. It really doesn't matter. I mean, I've had guys, you know, rub my shoulders, and I've been like, oh, yeah, that's fucking awesome. Like, you know, and it's not, you know, I'm just kind of joking around. But I don't know what it is. But, yeah, if I had a choice, I'd be like, yeah, get the girl. But you'd think the guy would have stronger hands, right? So maybe that'd be good. Uh, Joe Compton, I think you might have missed my shout-out, man, but I gave you a shout-out earlier. Um, Joe Compton has officially been added to the all-time 3000 uh, or more dollars donated to the show all-time. So you'll see Joe Compton, the rent-a-god's name there forever, 
as long as I exist here on YouTube, in the uh, pr production executive producers area. So thank you to Rena God Shell um, and uh, Soundwave92 and everybody else. Sith Negan reminded me today that you needed to be added to that list. So you have been added to that list now. And shout out to the $25 producers, man, that we shouted out earlier who are patrons, $25 producers. Thank you for keeping the shows going uh, here on uh, and whatever. Um, uh, I played the judge talking about the MSNBC photographer who followed the jury, which is crazy. It's got to be some kind of a federal crime or something. Uh, I don't know. So we're going to see what happens there. That's interesting. Uh, and we got Kenny Omega who's got double surgery. Um, so that's a pro that's crazy. I mean, we knew this was going to happen, but he's had vertigo issues. Uh, that's an issue. Uh, room will start spinning for him while he's uh, while he was wrestling. Meltzer said that Kenny Omega is most likely set for multiple surgeries. The dates of those surgeries are still to be determined. He is taking time away from the ring in order to get healthy for the first time in a while. So now we've lost. Kenny Omega for probably six months at least. Kenny Omega's gone for, I would believe, at least the next half year, if not more. So Kenny Omega's gone for six months. And Moxley is gone. Crazy. When it comes to a return date, nothing is set in stone, but February was mentioned. However, Meltzer noted that it could be premature as he hasn't even had the surgeries yet. Yeah, so February, so we're talking about rest of November, rest of December, rest of January. That's three months. February is four months. Uh, January, February, March, April. So I'm saying not to like, I'm saying not till after February. I'm saying April. Like, I don't think April, April or May, I think is when you'll see Kenny Omega maybe back. Maybe. So, you know, that's, that's big, man, this guy. But, you know, he held it down as this heel for a while, and he's going to be gone for a while. Like vertigo, multiple other surgeries. You know, you're looking at three to six months, man. But I think it's six months. I don't think it's. I don't think. I don't think three months is possible. You know. Um, Kenny Omega. I don't know. I'm looking it up. Yeah, I don't see anything else on it. So, I mean, we'll see what happens, but this, this don't look good if you're a Kenny Omega fan, you know, for the next six months. He may return in June. See, I, I would lean I would lean more, more towards that. Um, he mentions vertigo in the chiropractor video, too. That's in, uh, insanity to have that in the wrestling ring. Yeah, imagine that in the middle of wrestling. All of a sudden, the room is spinning. Joe Compton, thank you, brother. Whoa! It should be required to play Don Henley's Dirty Laundry song. Love you, Joe. <laughs> Mickey K9 with the $18. The drop, the big 1-8. Fuck, man, Mickey. Thank you so much, bro. That is so my gas money for the rest of the week. Thank you, dude. Ah, oh, man. Don Henley. You ever seen how much an Eagles concert costs? Don Henley's probably up there, too. Dirty Laundry. Well, we're going to get hit with a copyright, but we got to hear this. Oh, maybe we can do a cover of it. Don Henley, Dirty Laundry, rock electronic song. All right, let's see. Uh... Mm. 
Yeah, this is a very true song, no doubt about it. I know it, too. People want me to die and fail so they can laugh at me. Um, I can't believe the dislike button is gone. So now you cannot gauge anymore. Like, so like you know when you click on a video and it's a 10-minute video and it's a scam video or something like that and you're watching it for a second and you're not really 100% sure if it's a scam or if it's something fucked up, but you can clearly tell right away when you see the dislike ratio. You know what I mean? So now, so when you see the video immediately, you see like 9,000 dislikes and like 50 likes and you're like, oh, and then you read the comments like bullshit, scam, scam, like this is, I mean, yeah, the comments will help, but it's like that immediately helps. So now you got to spend time watching a video that might actually be a scam and you can't figure it out if they turn off any of those things. I don't know. Whatever. I, it's just a dumb <laughs> fucking pussies. Ugh. Like, I leave my dislikes on. I don't usually turn them off unless it's, like, ever. You know I mean? I've had things disliked before, and I just, okay, they didn't like that. Or, okay, I, I didn't look good here. Or some, you know, whatever. But so I, I don't understand why you would do that. So, you know, I don't know. I just, I, I looked over it. I saw the di uh, dislike thing. I thought it was weird. You know, they took it away. I thought it was weird. Mickey K9, thank you for the 18. Um, what is this? What is this about? I remember this song, I feel like. I have been an actor, but I wound up here. I just have to look good. Mm. I to be clear. Let's go. Come on, whisper in my ear. Give a sturdy longer. Man, I haven't heard this song in a while. Kick him when they're up, kick him when they're down. Kick him when they're up, kick him when they're down. Fire. That's a, a fire song that I haven't heard uh, in a bit. There's a little Don Henley live. There it is. You ever seen an Eagles ticket to go see the Eagles back in the day, back in the 90s? Dude, the Eagles charged, like, fucking insane amounts of money. It was, like, $300 for a bleacher seat. Like, if you wanted to sit in the back of an Eagles concert in a gigantic arena, like, it was, like, $300 to sit, like, fucking way in the back. And you're like, dude, I'm not even, they look like peas up here. I remember one time we had, I had to go to a Bob Dylan concert, and I didn't want to go because I already knew it was hard to hear the guy anyway. Unless you were in a small bar, like a small place, it'd be awesome. But who the hell wants to see Bob Dylan in the Boston Garden? And so sure enough, we ended up getting tickets to the Boston Garden show, and I was in the bleachers with my mother and her crazy boyfriend guy. And there he was down there looking... Like, and you just can't even make it just sounds like echoes echoing everywhere and like mumbles and echoes and you're like dude why are we here for a bob dylan show in like the balcony and all we can hear is like and like there was nothing you could make out that was real anything now, if it was in a small place like the Avalon in Boston or a blues club or something like that where there was maybe 300 people, I think seeing Bob Dylan would probably be pretty cool. But seeing Bob Dylan, where you have to be 100 or more feet away from him in a giant echoey place, it's not going to be a good time. You know, not going to be a good time. I had more fun. I think I saw... I think I saw... I saw... I saw fucking... I saw a lot of things that I didn't want to see that were good. 
I don't know. Just just up close is better, man. I saw She Wants Revenge. I didn't even know who they were at the time back in 2006 or five, And I had more fun at that, and I didn't even know who they were. She Wants Revenge. Saul Williams. I saw Saul Williams. I'd never heard of Saul Williams. Saw Saul Williams in 2004, 2003. Then in 2005 again, I saw him. He, that was funner. Everybody knows Bob Dylan. Not a lot of people knew Saul Williams. Saul Williams was way better because I could hear him. I could see him. I was there. And I was far away. But being far away at a Bob Dylan show is like a fucking waste of time. Aaron Lewis is pretty cool. I probably you could see him anywhere. Uh, what's up, Joe Compton? Hello, hello. They don't have a cure for vertigo, says Vape Ross Vape. That's a good point. Yeah, there's no cure for that. There's just like a there's a bunch of like maybe cures, like try this, try that cure. Like not cures, but try this, try that things, right? I need to get adjusted. What up, Beersy? I, I probably do need an, some kind of adjustment. I probably need a lot of adjustments. You know what I mean? I probably need some uh some super adjustments. Club and theater Do shows little are basketball dance oh my on god. concrete. Oh my god, what? I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. I know it. I'll be honest, I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. Media wants to make sure their truth gets through since corporations and the White House got mad at all the dislikes. Nineteen eighty four is here to stay. Anyway, still waiting for the big meteor to wipe us out, but at least we have you in Vitae Games. Get right. scared. Get scared. What up, King Crimson? Do you, do you know why you do you know a good reason why you leave the dislikes up? Because now what's going to happen is people are going to attack those people. Like for the people that don't understand, it doesn't matter what political party you are. The White House videos were massively disliked. And it's not even that you could say like, oh, it's all the Republicans review bombing it or whatever. Nobody liked the White House videos. Like even the likes are dead. When Obama would release a video, it would get massively liked. When Obama released the video, it would get 70 percent like ratio. When Donald Trump released videos on YouTube on the White House YouTube channel, it would do about 85 to 90 percent like ratio well joe biden releases a white house video it literally gets 10 percent like ratio 90 percent are dislikes 80 to 90 percent disliked it is a unbelievably dis and it's not even just that it's the likes are down when Trump would make a video on the White House thing, the likes were like up, way up, like in the thousands and crazy. When Obama made videos, likes were way up. When Biden makes a video, the likes are minuscule. 80, 300, 400, 500 or something. They don't often cross a thousand likes, but they often get Thou like five thousand dislikes and things like that, so it it tells you that you know just to make it sort of bipartisan that Obama did well on YouTube. Um, Trump did well on YouTube. Joe Biden, no, not doing well. In fact, doing horrifically terrible. Whatever that means, I don't know, but uh, that is, I don't. You could take that however you want. It's just what those. I don't know. Is that why they got rid of dislikes? Because the White House? I don't know. It's probably because a lot of different people, but it could be. I don't know. I'm thinking about running for goddamn mayor in my local area. These fucking people can't figure out the water situation out here. We got fucking deadly chlorine in our fucking water. They have to send us all fucking paper in the mail about it out here. And I'm like, yeah, people's pets died last year. And I'm like, this has been going on since I moved in. When I bought this house, I was disclosed that there was a water issue. That there was too much chlorine in the water. And now it's still going on. And I'm like, who the fuck doesn't get this fixed? You know? 
I said, I sh- should I run for mayor yet? Because this place needs help. And about 30 people locally all liked my comment and said, I'd vote for you. So I'm going to be a mayor, guys. Um, I'm just, and then I'll be president. And then I'll be president for all you guys. And I'll be the independent president that you all deserve. I will be the independent president that, you know, deals with left and right issues. Progressively and conservatively for all of you. The fuck? Troy, I don't give a fuck about your Halo Xbox, you spoiled piece of shit with no kids so you can afford to buy that. Fuck yourself. Um, Rittenhouse thing is crazy. Dude, dude, it's crazy. An MSNBC, like, employee, or allegedly, followed the jurors so hard that he ran a traffic light, the cops pulled him over, and they asked him what he's doing. And he had to disclose, I was told to follow them, to take pictures of the jury. Who's, you're not supposed to follow the jury or take photos of the jury. MSNBC followed the jury. That's crazy. And it's gonna it's gonna come back probably confirmed that he's an employee. It's gonna confirm that you know he probably was told to do this, which is gonna confirm that he's doing it for MSNBC, which is gonna confirm that MSNBC told him to do that, which is gonna confirm that MSNBC is run and funded by who? Hello. Do I shop at Cam Man Foods? Um, I used to. I used to shop at Cam Man Foods. Uh, when I lived in Quincy, I did. We had a Cam Man Foods in uh, in Quincy, uh, towards the Quincy, right outside of Quincy Center. I would shop at Cam Man Foods all the time. Loved it. Loved Cam Man. Actually, they actually took over the Bradleys. Bradleys went out of business, and uh, when Bradleys went out of business everywhere. Um, Cam Man moved in there, so I do miss Bradley's kind of, but you know, I mean, we got Walmart, same thing, just the name Bradley's. But uh, yeah, no, uh, Cam Man was great, 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 great food you could get in there, man. Probably, probably Soros VGK, probably Soros, and all the other weirdos. I mean, it's it's just literally, it's like what I don't want to be a conspiracy person. It's just conspiracies are real and this is real the place is the best yeah it's pretty fire bro yeah you can buy a dog in there skinned uh for no i'm just kidding <laughs> i don't want to do that you can't do that um you saw aaron lewis at the music hall somewhere in mass in september of 2018 oh with the uh the Harp uh, was it at Harper's Ferry or it's it's called Music Hall now, but it used to be called Harper's Ferry. Um, what's it called now? It's called uh, they renamed it to Music Hall something. Oh, Brighton Music Hall was it at Brighton Music Hall? Brighton Music Hall is small. That's like a place that holds about four hundred, not even four hundred, probably like three hundred people maybe. Or so I don't know, Brighton probably Brighton Music Hall is what you're where you saw Aaron. That's in us. Uh, um, shit. What's the what's the place? It begins with an A in Boston. Um, shit. I have a lot of friends that live out there. Actually, it's uh begins with an A. Fuck. It's not Somerville. It begins with an A. Uh, whatever. I don't know. Actually, I should probably just look up Brighton Music Hall and I'll find it. Uh. Could be in could be bright. It's probably Brighton, but it's right near the Alston. Alston. It's in Alston. There we go. Alston. Thank you. Figured it out. Whoo! <laughs> MSNBC has the written house jury fall. The judge explains today in court. MSNBC allegedly intimidating the jury in the written house case. All signs lead back to Soros. <laughs> of course. Um, I forgot what it is called. Yeah, it's probably that. It's very small. There's like so so uh, Anthony, if you're in the building, 
Um, the bar is on the left. When you walk in, there's like an open area, a pool section on the right where you can play pool. And then if you walk straight, the bar comes up on your left. And then straight ahead, there's a stage. And then there's like the little area where you can watch be- at the stage. So that's probably what it is. Probably Brighton Music Hall. Uh, I'm not surprised the media is always trying to separate the people. Yeah, I mean, the media is a mess right now. I mean, dude, can you think of anything more evil than the media at this point? We got, dude, we have so, like, the whole world's crazy right now. You know, the Great Reset's real, obviously. They, You know what I mean? That's not even, like, a thing. They're really resetting us. Like, they're resetting us, like, in the most methodical way. And while they're doing the little resets of things and changes of things and manipulations of things to, to what we do every day and what, how everything goes... They keep us fighting with all this dumb other stuff, right? Like, make make that part of it, right? The Rittenhouse trial, this thing, that shooting, that trial, that problem. And it's all, there's always this something over here. We're fighting with each other about this, that, or the other thing. Um, you know, this is racist, that is racist. Like, parks are racist because there's too many white people in parks. Like, what? Like, is that re- that's really a thing? That's really a one-hour special on fucking NBC about how parks are racist because there's too many white people in the parks? Can you imagine going and saying that there's too many of anybody else in some area which makes it bad? You know what I mean? Like, oh, this is kind of racist or scary because only this type of individual involves themselves in it. So it's really hard for outsiders. It's like, what? It's a park. It's the nature. Everybody goes to parks and can go to parks at any point and does. I know I know a lot of Asian Americans who go to parks, different area, different Vietnamese, Chinese, Japanese backgrounds go to parks. They enjoy it when they go. I know a lot of black guys that go fucking camping. I don't know why NBC and these news sources treat people like they're not real or human. I definitely understand. I definitely understand that there's certain types of people that like to do these things more than others, maybe, you know, or people that are, you know, able to do it that aren't, some of the people aren't, but it's really about class, not about the race. It's about class. If if you have a great job and you get vacation time and you make good money, you can afford to go camping and grab some time off and go have some fun with your family. You know, if you're somebody that's working three jobs, like, and you're poor, it doesn't matter what color you are, you won't be able to really go camping, nor will you think about, let me go camping for a couple of weeks. No, you'd be like, I can't go camping. If I go camping for a couple of weeks, I'll lose my apartment and my, my kids would, you know, so, like, it's, that's, it's about, that's class, that's, like, class. But either way, they'll use it in some evil way to whatever the fuck, um, you know? Let me tell you. Yo, Guz, what up, man? Guz, I work with a Guz. Isn't that weird? He likes cock, like you do. I'm just kidding. Um, dude, you should have seen Leah upstairs uh, fucking playing the VR. It looks hilarious. She's up there playing the VR, and she's, like, falling over. Uh, you hear about Ric Flair merch and certain material on Ric Flair being taken off Peacock. No, I didn't. Fuck Peacock. They suck. Boy, does Peacock suck. NBC has ruined the WWE Network. Absolutely ruined it. You know? Absolutely ruined it. It's like, it's just like the whole world, dude. The whole world right now is going through entropy. We are all seemingly going through entropy. All systems are breaking down. It's why Xbox, you know, Xbox 360, the top of the chain, it was amazing. And then they took Xbox 360 and they made Xbox One. And somehow Xbox One, the menus are worse. The system was worse. How do you perfect something, nearly perfect something in Xbox 360? And all you have to do when you come out with the next Xbox is not let a red ring of death happen. Just take everything you did in Xbox 360 and make it better and improve it. And that's it. But instead they make it worse and harder to use which is a breakdown of the system in choice, in name, in technology, and creativity. A breakdown in all those things. And a breakdown in sales, and that's what leads to your your breakdown as a company or as a console. All systems are doing this everywhere. The height of YouTube, same thing. 
now we're going to do a bunch of weird shit that hurts us as we break down. It's it's classic. It's everywhere. The WWE Network was was really good. It was like a seven out of ten app, maybe an eight out of ten app, probably a seven out of ten though. Let's be honest, seven point five something like that. And we thought, man, if they just made it a little bit better, we used to complain about the WWE Network. Some of the only issues with the WWE Network were the stabilization of the streaming service itself. So if they had just updated and fixed the stabilization of the streaming service itself, that would have been better and and done a little bit better with the search features. It would have been a little bit better, but they took it and they sold it to NBC Peacock, and now it is awful. It is integrated with the Peacock application, which is a horrible one. It's a 5 out of 10 at best. So you have degraded a breakdown in your system of how you are delivered the WWE network. A, just constant breakdowns of systems and bad decisions leading to a, a tip-top era breaking down. You can look at my show as, a, as an example as that as well. I started out here. My show went all the way up to here. And my show reached its pinnacle in 2017 to 2018. But over time, uh, the algorithm changes. I make decisions that don't work out. People end up leaving. People have to leave. Chemistry changes. Things like that. And the systems break down, getting into that breakdown of entropy. It happens everywhere, constantly. It's almost unbelievable. Blizzard is going downhill as well. Blizzard made a bunch of bad decisions or decisions that didn't work out as well. They're owned by Activision, obviously. So there's another, you know, you're, you're, it's another, it's a, it's room for error. The more you allow room for error, um, and don't make safer decisions. See, you should make much safer decisions when you are on top. When you're on top, you make safer decisions because when you make safer decisions, you won't stray too far from the blueprint that's gotten you to where you are. But these companies seemingly like to make extreme decisions when they're on top. They make extreme decisions. They make far out decisions, decisions that are just wildly different than what they had just made in decisions that led them to the point of success. Why would you do that? You know, if you held a dart with three fingers in a certain way and threw it at the dartboard and you came really close to hitting the bullseye, then you did it again, and you threw it at the dartboard, and you hit the bullseye. Why then, on the third dart, would you decide to hold the dart with two fingers and change your stance? There is no reason to do that. So when you throw the dart with two fingers with a different trajectory, because you're trying something different for no reason, when you were, had pretty good success, and you throw the dart, and it goes wildly to the left and hits the wall. Why would you do that? You should have kept to where you were and tried to perfect your accuracy because you were already on target. No need to change directions. So I call this self-inflicted entropy. Self-inflicted entropy. When you and your friend have a successful podcast, radio, TV show, whatever you want to call it, and the two of you are doing really well, you got good chemistry, everybody loves you, and then you allow personal beef or something weird to get in the way of it, and you end up getting in a fight, and then you break up, the show's over. And the both of you go off and make much less money, and the show ends, and you've got to do these little things on the side, and it doesn't really ever get to where it used to be. That is self-inflicted entropy. Fucking self-inflicted entropy. It's the dumbest thing ever. When you call your Xbox Xbox, and then you call your second Xbox Xbox 360, and then you call your third Xbox Xbox One, in my opinion, that, my friend, is self-inflicted entropy. And then when you call your fourth Xbox, Xbox One X or Xbox One S, that is stunningly self-inflicted entropy. That is so stunningly self-inflicted. The people that thought of it should be fucking cut with fucking dildos. Like, I mean, like, what in the fuck are you doing? Get scared. King Crimson, thanks for that $10, man. What have I been live for? Um, I've been live now for 46 minutes. And uh, I do want to say thank you to uh, King Crimson and Mickey K9 for uh, dropping the donations. It's $28 
for 46 minutes. That's pretty cool. Pretty fire. I need about seven more of those hours done, but it's okay. Maybe even 360 two finger it. Yeah, how about three? How about Xbox tres or Xbox three? How about Xbox three with those slashes like Diablo three did? That would have looked awesome, right? With these little slashes and hooks. How about Xbox four? How cool would the Xbox logo look with a four on fire? <laughs> Like the Monster Energy Drink green logo, but it's like a four and it's on fire in green. That'd be cool as shit. But you make the four like really cursive looking and cool. Or Infinity like we thought it was going to be Xbox Infinity. That would have cool, looked cool with the Infinity logo. But no. Xbox One S W O C L E, so nobody can fucking figure out something. Talk about, wow, brilliant marketing, Xbox, you fucking idiots. And that's what we're seeing with WWE. We're seeing self-inflicted entropy constantly by WWE. You see, when WWE failed in 1994 and 1995 and 1996, three years, they came out of it. What? What the fuck? We planned the spot all day. Oh, my God. I want you to jam it in. Sith Megan's the name. Dropping Omega Bombs is my game. JCS is the place. Oh. If you've got the time, listen to this. While I finish this rhyme. Oh my god! Sith freaking Megan! He's here! Holy shit! Play that Don Henley shit again. Sith Megan Bomb! Let's freaking go! I don't believe it, man. Sith Negan has dre has graced us with his presence. Holy shit, bro. Sith Negan, thank you, man. I was mentioning Sith Negan earlier and he's here. Yeah, it was because of him I put the uh, the new donator list down below that I should have put up there 6 months ago. Thank God Sith Negan stayed on my ass about it so I could remember to do it. So check down below Shell and everybody else. I actually have to add Drew to that list too, uh, ne uh, Sith. I actually have to add Drew to that because actually he should be on there too. I think that we I left him. We left him out. I didn't even think about it. He really should be on there. He's donated more than, for sure over the years. Um, man, thank you, Sith. That was crazy, bro. Holy hell, brother. We gotta we gotta put that name up for that. That's crazy. Uh, thank you to to. Uh, King Crimson and Mickey K9 before that, but yeah, Sith Negan, holy shit, dude, a Sith bomb. The Emperor himself. Holy shit, dude. Wow. On an afternoon, anything goes stream. Holy hell, man. Fuck, man. Thank you, Sith. Man, that's so fucking crazy. That's crazy. Oh, my God, dude. $200 from Sith Negan. Get wet. Get scared. Dude, get scared. Are you serious? Get scared, bro. Wow. All right. So, uh, thank you, Sith. Holy shit, brother. Um, Leah, wake up. Yeah, she probably upstairs did hear me screaming, probably. She's up there playing, uh, playing with the kids, actually. That's why I'll be, uh, when I get off of here, I'm going to go hang out with the kids. They actually had a half day today, so they got off early. So that right as they got home, I started this. So they've been waiting for me. Uh, PWP Nation in the house. It's up to him. Thanks for saying that I rule. I rule something. Uh, yes, maybe he might need to be added. You might be right, Sith. Bird might need to be added too. He he hates my guts now, but he needs to be added <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Man, he fucking talks some crazy shit about me. Like he hates. Like he just fucking shits on me all the time. <laughs> Or uh, at least he did months ago. I don't know. He's wild. But I'll put him on the list. He deserves to be there. I like him anyway. Fuck it. 
Bird. The bird. Like, he said some fucked up shit, though. Like, why do people fucking do that? I don't know why they do that. Why do people like me and then they talk, like, weird, crazy shit? Like, I don't get it. I called him out for one thing one time, and I never heard the end of it. It's like, you can call me out 50 times for everything and shit on me left and right everywhere and say that you didn't and then do it. and then. But if I call one thing out, like, it's like, it was over after that. So I learned to just deal with it, you know. If someone talks shit about you, just fucking, you just got, I just got to let it happen. If people shit on me for stuff that's not even real or true, or if it is true or isn't true, whatever, just let it go. Just let them, let them do it, man. Because if you, if you stick up for yourself, that's it. You're dead. To, you're fucked forever if you stick up for yourself. Uh, I did not talk about The Rock yet. That's coming up next. But, yeah, I, gotta, I think I have to add Burr to that list. Um... I did not talk about The Rock yet. So we talked about Kenny Omega. We talked about the Rittenhouse stuff, him, the jurors being following, uh, being followed by MSNBC. That's going to be a huge thing. I mean, that's going to be a federal fucking case, I think. Um, the Rock responds to WWE superstars' comments in his backstage interactions. This is very weird. The Rock, <coughs> the Rock was at Raw to do some filming for Fighting With My Family, and this is uh, Mustafa Ali. At the time, Mustafa says, I was part of the cruiserweight division. We all pretty much knew, stay out of the way. Rock was walking by a camera crew and was obviously busy, talking to multiple people for an upcoming shoot. He walks by the cruiserweight, who are the cruiserweights who are pretty much posted up to the wall to not be in his way whatsoever while he does stuff. He stops, does a 180, and says hello to all of us. Shook everyone's hand. Um, now saying hello shouldn't be a big deal, but when you're a br- when you're brand new and one of the biggest stars in the world treats you as a peer, it means something. It's a class act from him. Rock later responded to uh, Mustafa's comments. Uh, he goes, "I remember uh, this moment very well." Rock responded in comments. I was impressed at how sharp everyone was dressed and how respectful the guys just stood there. Mouth shut, ears open, how how it should be with the rookies. I'm happy you made you made it to the dance. Make all the money you can and have fun. That's what The Rock said. So very nice interaction there uh, with The Rock and Mustafa Ali. The Rock, The Rock, really genuinely, I I, I really can't find anything wrong with The Rock almost ever. I really think he's this genuinely positive pretty solid dude you know like i like the rock i really do i don't find you know i know he's got that hollywood you know businessman at aspect to him now you know and and cena kind of has that too but you know even though i like you know cena seems nice but cena's like got some wily weird side to him that you know you almost feel like when you when you leave the room he makes funny or something like that he's like fucking guys a fucking idiot you know like i almost feel like that but i feel like the rock wouldn't and I don't know, and maybe that's not true. For all we know, John Cena could be the better guy. But I just, I get that perception that The Rock wouldn't do that. That if that if you left the room, you know, maybe The Rock would crack a little joke or something like that. But if you left the room and somebody was malicious towards you, The Rock would be like, nah, man, I'm not about that. Why, why don't you say that when he's, when he's here? And I feel like The Rock would be like, you know, he would make a joke, but he wouldn't he wouldn't do it viciously. Like, I I don't know, man. Like, that's the vibe I get from The Rock. I don't know him. I don't know anything. He could be shitty like maybe anybody. And maybe Cena's the better one. I don't know. But it, I just get the vibe that Cena would actually be like, man, fuck this guy again. Fuck. You know, meanwhile, The Rock would be kind of like, hey, man, listen, he's just trying to whatever. He's not a, it's not a big deal. Yeah, he's a little annoying and shit like that. But yeah, he's cool, you know. I feel like that's The Rock. Now, I could be wrong, you know. No doubt about it. Maybe I am. Um, I've used uh, what I've used in his movie on Netflix. What Cody Johnson? What did you use? You used a a dingleberry sauce. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know fucking know what you're saying. Um, we got yeah, we got a few more minutes left. So if you guys want to drop some comments, feel free to do it. So there's the story with the Rock. Just a nice, positive, happy story. The Rock responding to Mustafa Ali. Um, 
If you guys have topics or comments, leave them in the chat. Love to talk about it. New WWE 2K22 footage and features revealed. Uh, my GM mode for everybody that cares about that. That stuff is coming out. Um, you know, being 37 now and playing enough fucking video games to last a lifetime, it's like I, I'm less hype pretty much about stuff. But at the same time, I mean, it's pretty big news, I guess, for the for video game people. Uh, and I mean... You guys remember when WWE 2K followed me? That was really cool. And then they were going to invite me to the thing, and then they didn't because <laughs> the WWE guy was like, no, not him. That was fucking hilarious. I just thought of that. Um, so here's a little bit. But I, I will say one thing. The, the intros, like, they look, obviously, every time intros come out every couple of years or every year or whatever, you look at the game and you go, wow, this looks more real than ever. But all that matters really is, dude, the gameplay. It comes down to how fun is the gameplay, how realistic is it, and is it fun? Sometimes it's not even realistic. It just has to be fun. If it's fun to play the game, if it's unpredictable and stuff like that, that's what makes it fun. Unpredictability, those amazing wow moments, even sometimes the occasional glitch moments can be exciting if they're okay. Um, th that's what I like. I, I like some of those unpredictable moments in the video games. If it's a very predictable, stiff game, I don't like it. And if, you know, if the videos look great, but then the gameplay sucks, I mean, then who cares? I can watch a video easily. Like right there, this looks amazing. Goldberg right there, that looks crazy real. They, the graphics do look really good. Populated by monsters, giants, and larger than life beings, I was determined to find L larger than life beings. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> my own path to the top of the mountain in sports entertainment. My faction. Whoa. I got to tell you, man, it, this looks really crisp. All right, so we'll get some full details in January. I know it looks, it look, that looks really crisp. I mean, it's, I'd like to see the actual full on gameplay, though. Again, like we said, but the rock, yeah, the rock mocks people's candy asses to their face. I like that. That's fire. Sith Negan bomb, man. I still can't believe he did that. Thank you, Sith. Um, I'll give you a thumbs up and still put that on 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 Twitter. Uh, thank you, Sith, man. Not only and uh, for for getting those uh, people on the board down below who are over three thousand dollar marks. So yeah, I think we got to hit Bird up and Drew up there as well. So I'll have to do that um, when I probably tomorrow or later. No, fuck it. I'll do it in a little while. I'm home today. Um, any other things that I missed that you guys wanted to talk about? Uh, I'm trying to think. Tonight is out of nowhere. If Jake is okay, I'm not sure if he will be. I think we may be just gearing up for tomorrow night's monetize this instead. But, you know, tomorrow night will be possibly starting early maybe for monetize this because i have a big saturday so i won't be up late on friday night so it may be a two or three hour monetize this that starts earlier than usual and uh that will be this week and it, in about a week or two i should be able to go back to a more loose schedule uh in about a week or two so i'll know that soon and yeah i played a little bit of halo uh, a little bit, but I haven't had a lot of time. So I actually could be streaming Halo tonight. Uh, I might be playing with Wolf. I don't know yet. But we got to make, you know, I just got to get Wolf uh, to commit to not saying bad words on the stream. <laughs> he drops a lot of words that are pretty bad. Well, you better believe it because it happened. Sith Negan with a bomb. Thank you, Sith. 
Um, that's it, man. I, guys, I'm out of steam as far as this goes. I almost wanted to fucking just stick around and keep rolling because of Sith Negan's bomb, but what I will do is probably come back a little bit later with something or play some video games tonight, courtesy of Sith Negan and his $200 bomb. Julius Jones in OKC. The earlier the better, says GMTA. All right, you got to hit that like button, guys, since they took away the dislike button, so might as well hit the like button and stick the thumb directly up the Cronin's ass. Uh, play some Super Nintendo. I, I do have one. I think I need a um I need the I need something. Maybe the power strip. I need something to make the Super Nintendo's got something wrong with it where I need to get something. Uh at some point I'll I, you know, I'll be thinking about doing that. Um so man, thank you guys for coming out, hanging here, sharing this, talking about everything here, dropping donations. Um much appreciated. Here comes another one. Let's see what furry balls is saying. Super chat party! Oh, yeah? Phrase of the day, self-inflicted entropy. <laughs> so do what WWE should do and stick to what actually works and make shit better. I agree. Got it, lol. Yes, I'm guilty of self-inflicted entropy as well. Because, you know, one thing that Joe Rogan talks about, furry balls, and one thing that Jesse always talked about, Jesse always talked about this. He always, Jazzy Utah, what's up, Jazzy? Um, you are your own worst enemy because of the ego in your mind. Your ego really messes things up. If somebody says bad stuff about you behind your back and you find out about it, you feel the need to strike back or to call it out or to make whatever. And that all dr comes from the ego, you know, for the most part. Whereas you could say, hey, you said these things about me. Like, is there any way I could rectify it? Or maybe like, like, I it sucks that you talk about me behind my back, man. Like, maybe, like, what did I do? Like, maybe I can fix this. Could I fix this to where you, you're not, not so mad at me anymore or whatever? Or what could I do better? You know, and if you came in it like that, you might change people's minds and stuff like that. And, but most people don't do it that way. They, they go, well, fuck that person. Why would you talk about me like that? And that's an ego-driven thing. And, and that's why taking shrooms and DMT and all these psychedelics and stuff like that can really drop your ego down. And eliminate that so that you don't hold grudges and go crazy. Um, you know, it was like when Joe Rogan didn't have Alex Jones on for two a year or two after he was on. And Alex went on rants every day about Joe Rogan sucks. Fuck Joe Rogan. He's a scumbag. He won't have me back on because of whatever. And and Joe Rogan, you know, just forgave him for all that. I was like, yeah, whatever. You goofy. Like, I, it's all good. You know, that's like he's totally has no ego to 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 bruise or to boost in those and he just drops the walls and allows uh, friendship to continue uh, Jesse always talked about that and Jesse was right about shrooms and DMT and things like that um, you know Jesse really hit on that head and on that nail the only reason Sith Negan that that time does kind of suck though is wrestling is going on during that time and a lot of people aren't going to watch because wrestling's going on you know what I mean so it's like that's the thing that sucked uh, Sith about that time, but I am going to probably do that this Friday night will be probably earlier, probably 930, something like that till about 1 a.m. So, yeah, look for monetize this to be really early this Friday night, tomorrow night um, and be here and come hang out, man. And, and if you want to be here, be here. Let me know that you guys uh, want it and I'll be here. And uh, Sith Negan certainly has let us know that tonight, today. But uh I do want to say thank you to uh, Moss Blaze last night for that drop. Mickey K9 with the 18, King Crimson with the 10, Sid Negan with the 200, Furry ball, uh, Balls plop menacingly on the table. You are a freaking beast as well. Sith Negan. Sith Negan. 31 months. Straight up $100. On the Patreon. Thank you, sir. Thank you all for being here. I hope you got something out of this stream here tonight, today. I'll be back tonight. Thank you so much for allowing me to do over an hour here on YouTube with you guys. Uh, means the world, man. You guys support on Patreon and here. And thanks for being a part of the shows. Um, you guys are just so, so awesome, man. We have the best community in the goddamn world. This community is fire, bro. Since day one. And we're coming up on the 10th year, 10 years of the Joe Cronin Show. We're coming up on that, I believe, in January. 
will be the anniversary of my first ever video here on The Joe Cronin Show, which I believe was in January of 2012. I believe. Let's look it up and see. The day I decided to launch this channel and I was like, yo, I'm going to do a sports and gaming channel specifically. Or maybe I'm wrong on the date, but I don't know. Okay, I, I am wrong on the date. My first video is of August 25th, 2012, where I announced this channel. And then um, my first wrestling video on this channel takes place um, YCM Punk vs. Vince McMahon boosted ratings. That took place on October of 2012. So we are about, we are one year away almost from the 10th year anniversary of a wrestling video. But we're only about, you know, 10 months away from the anniversary. So I'm actually wrong. I thought it was January. I don't know why. Probably because in January of 2013 is where I really started doing the, the wrestling reviews. So it's actually 2013. So that's interesting. A little fun fact. I don't know. So we're coming up on 10 years either way. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely, man. I am going to stay here. I will always. I will be here in some form forever if I can be. But I'll certainly be doing as much as I can. I'm working on finding that balance right now, which I think I can do. And I want to thank you guys for all the nice emails, DMs, and shit like that. I know that I don't say it a lot because I'm kind of quiet when it comes to that sort of stuff. But thank you guys for supporting me, private messages, and bullshit like that. I know that I don't always respond to everything sometimes. I definitely read it, though, and I see it. Sometimes I just feel embarrassed about it and I don't know what to say, but I appreciate it. Like, it makes me feel better and good, but I'm in, I don't know what to do. So, man, thank you. You guys have been awesome to me and my family and many of my friends over the years. And that's it, man. We'll see you tonight. Thank you to Sith Negan for the Negan Bomb. Kick him when they're up, kick him when they're down. Kick him when they're up, kick him when they're down. And remember, you guys can use that thanks button down below if you're watching this on replay, if you want to get weird. But I don't think anybody's going to beat the, the Sith. Sithy Sith, filthy Sith, nasty Sith, dirty Sith. Sissa, here I come with my cock in your mouth, I'm gonna take it out, bitch, shut it down. Oh my god, yeah, eat my dick, I'm gonna come and say your mother when it's really thick. I'm gonna come up in that bitch tonight, I'm gonna put my fucking comments on the dark tonight. Who wanna come? Joe Cronin Show, a wrestling podcast with attitude. <laughs>